Now, the reason why I am so hyped uh, to make this video for you is because for the very first time in my entire 25 plus year long magical journey, I actually had the foresight to record myself creating, casting a spell all the way from start to finish. And when I say finish, I don't just mean like the end of me casting the spell. I mean, literally all the way through to the results playing out before my eyes and I managed to catch it all on film. What's up witches? Welcome back to my channel where you are the magic and where I talk about Wicca, witchcraft, tarot, spirituality, and pretty much any other topic that will help you on your journey from baby witch to better witch and talk about being on a roll in 2024. Yes, okay, because here I am back with another edited video for you guys. Um, we're doing this one story time mode uh, style and I am just beyond the roof excited to be making this video for you guys because I have been wanting to do so for over a year now. Um, but with everything going on with running the shop and just Bronx switching, um, I just haven't had the time to take all of you know the footage and everything that I had shot and compile it into a video. Um, but this year, thanks to some new routines, a better calendar, um, more help at the shop, I've been knocking off things on my to-do list just left and right. Um, and since I'm mentioning some of the things that have been helping me with knocking things off of my to-do list and being more productive this year, I want to give a shout out to basically what feels like my new secret weapon um i mentioned it in my last video but shout out to magic mind um, magic mind is an all natural productivity shot made from ingredients like ashwagandha and lion's mane mushrooms and turmeric um, it's like a nootropic adaptogenic powerhouse and um, comes in a little two ounce shot and it's basically become an essential part of my daily routine um, thanks to it, I have been able to stay focused and avoid distractions like scrolling on social media, which is a big problem for me. And it has made a huge difference in how much I'm able to get done in a day. This is basically like a tribute to how this video is getting made. So if you want to give Magic Mind a try for yourself, click the link in the description box and use my code BRXWITCH for up to 56% off of your first subscription. So just want to give that shout out and recommendation to you guys. Um, now, the reason why I am so hyped uh, to make this video for you is because for the very first time in my entire 25 plus year long magical journey, I actually had the foresight to record myself creating, casting a spell all the way from start to finish. And when I say finish, I don't just mean like the end of me casting the spell. I mean, literally all the way through to the results playing out before my eyes and I managed to catch it all on film. Um, and in general, I've been doing a much better job over the last few years of recording my magical life in my book of mirrors and my book of shadows, um, and just keeping magical records in general. But video footage is the creme de la creme of magical record keeping, and I managed to catch it all. Um, so first of all, um, I do have to give a little backstory, which is why we're shooting this video in like story time mode, um, because I want you to understand what was happening and why I cast a spell in the first place so you can understand it all. So I live in an apartment building in the Bronx, 
that's where we are right now. And uh, in between my building and the one next door, right out that window, is like a narrow strip of concrete that has served as a monthly parking lot spot, I guess, um, for as long as I can remember. And I've lived here for over 10 years. The parking lot is owned by some shady company that doesn't really monitor the space. Instead, they allowed some random dude basically to camp out in the back of it and oversee the place. Um, this guy was running, I don't know, some type of illegal side hustle, something. I don't know if he was chopping cars or what it was that he was doing, but super early in the morning, I'm talking crack of dawn and really late at night, these ma like mystery trucks would show up with random parts that he would be working on like at all times of the day. Now, I am not the type to get in the way of anybody's bag, okay? Um, so please don't come for me as like a hater on somebody's like livelihood because that's not what was going down at all. Um, I would never take issue with this person or anybody doing anything that they needed to make money for themselves ever. Um, the problem was this particular gentleman decided that it was okay to bang metal, weld iron, um, and do all of this unbelievably loud stuff as early as five or six in the morning, as late as nine o'clock at night. It would be on weekends, on holidays, days like Easter and Christmas that people are like, you know, trying to sleep in, spend with their families. It was terrible. And it was a very common occurrence for people in the buildings next door to actually lean out of their windows and yell at him. You know, like, hey, buddy, keep it down. Come on. My kids are trying to sleep. Cut it out. This was like a weekly thing. Personally, I have called 311. I called the Department of Buildings. I've called the owners of the parking lot. And I'm not really super proud to say, but I have even in desperate times called the police. And I know that I am not the only one who has made all of these same phone calls because every time I called one of these agencies, they were never surprised to hear from me, okay? It was always like, oh yeah, um, we'll look into it. Or like, oh yeah, we, we've gotten some complaints before. We're sorry, we'll see what we can do. And nothing would ever happen. No one would ever show up, nothing would ever happen. So I dealt with this for literally 10 years. Um, and I had pretty much resolved myself to just have to deal with it um, forever, I guess, until the straw that broke the camel's back. One day, uh, I happened to be off from work right here in this room, getting ready to take a nap, and I heard some commotion happening outside in the parking lot. So, of course, you know, I'm being nosy. Um, I went to peek out of the window and see what was going on. And from the argument that like had already started, I could tell that a couple from the next door building, a husband and wife, had come down to confront this guy and ask him to keep it down. And an argument had started uh, to, you know, develop and started to heat up. Midway through this argument, the dude in the parking lot decides to pick up a block of wood and swing it at the husband hitting him in the head, almost knocking him out. And I saw this all go down with my own two eyes. The wife, of course, starts freaking out. Somebody calls the police. Um, there's like some scuffling going on. And the next thing you know, the cops are here and the dude gets arrested. Well, we got about three days, I think, of peace. And then I don't know what happened. He was let out, he returned. And he was immediately right back to his regular antics, hammering, welding metal, six, seven in the morning. It was like nothing had happened. So after all of this happened, I realized that this guy was basically a complete piece of shit and that nobody, um, not even the police, were going to do anything or be able to do anything or whatever um, to give us any relief. As a Wiccan, personally, I take baneful magic fairly seriously, and it's something that I just personally choose 
not to engage in. I'm not like, oh, it's wrong, whatever. I just choose not to engage in it for my own personal reasons unless there's really something serious going on. And I felt like I had finally reached the point where it was time for me to take things into my own magical hands. Um, Now, before casting any type of magic, I go to my spirit guides and my ancestors through divination. Um, And I do that in order to ask questions like, should I be doing this work? Should this work be done, but perhaps by somebody else? Uh, If I should be doing this work, then what is the best type of spell to use or how should I go about it? Um, Should I call on any spirits or divine beings to assist me? Things like that. Um, And when I did that, they led me to some hoodoo work, um, specifically a type of banishment work called a hot foot. Um, If you've never heard of it, Hot foot work essentially works by um, creating like an energetically agitating powder that once made is then deployed in the path of where you know somebody is likely to walk. And when they come into contact with that powder, it's going to make them feel unwell usually or uncomfortable and just not want to walk in that path again. And I knew that this guy wasn't going to just get up and leave, that the whole parking lot was going to have to basically go out of business or not be used in order to accomplish this. And so um, I needed to essentially hot foot the whole space. So step one was the divination. And then step two was putting together the powder. Um, You can easily find hot foot powder recipes online Um, I happen to base mine off of a recipe included in Dorothy Morrison's book, Utterly Wicked, which I think I have like right over there, Um, you know, with like my own replacements and substitutions. Um, If you are curious about my exact recipe, I am going to share it inside of the Coven Community discussion feed when I drop this video. So if you haven't joined the Coven Community yet, um, you can do that and To do that, you just click the link in the description box and become a member. Um, But you can find them online, like I said, or use Dorothy's recipe. Um, Once I created the powder, then I needed the words that I was going to speak. For me, the spoken word is a key element in any spell casting. Um, I won't go down the rabbit hole of why and my theories about like magic on the breath and the power of words. Maybe maybe I'll get into that in like another video. Um, but because this powder is coming from the hoodoo tradition, it felt very appropriate for me to incorporate um, a passage of the Psalms from the Book of Psalms um, in this work. Because if you don't know, hoodoo and Bible verses pretty much go hand in hand. Um, so I chose a particular Bible verse. I'll share that in the coven feed too. And this one felt really right because basically it's asking the universe to turn the person's wickedness on themselves and let them face the consequences of basically being an asshole. So that vibe felt right. (laughs) Um, So spirit led me to cast the spell over the course of like seven days. So here I am going down in my elevator with my salt and pepper shaker, full of hot foot powder um, and a piece of paper with my Bible verse written on it. And by the way, salt and pepper shakers, very helpful for deploying magical powders. Anyway, um, whenever I'm doing baneful magic, I try to work with my left hand as much as possible. And I do certain rituals to protect my left hand from receiving back any of the energy that I am putting out. And I will um, include more details about my protection, like rituals, um, in the Coven community when I post about this spell. So um, I did all of that. I've got my powder. I've got my left hand ready. I've got my Bible verse. And basically, I just went out to the front of the parking lot every day for seven straight days in the morning, shaking the shaker, dropping the powder along the front entrance, and repeating my Bible verse over and over. Um, and yes, people could see me. 
it is New York City, so you're pretty much never alone. Um, I did my best to be as discreet as possible, but I definitely got a few, you know, weird stares. And um, it is what it is. I had to do what I had to do. I have no idea what these people thought I was doing, but um, yeah, it had to be done. So um, according to my book of mirrors, the last day of this spell was July um, like 2nd or something like that, 2022. Once I was done with the spell, I set it and forget it. Um, I do not spend a lot of time thinking about the spell itself once I've cast it. What I will do after a spell is I will focus my energy on myself. And I will take whatever steps are necessary, I feel, to shift my own energy and the energy of the environment around me in the direction of what I had cast for. So since I had cast for this parking lot to go away and for peace and quiet to be restored in my neighborhood, I basically just did my best to try to live my life as if the noise wasn't there. I would schedule meetings for early in the morning during the times when those noises were usually happening. Um, I was scheduling lives for the evenings, um, also at times when the noise would normally be happening. I stopped calling 311. I stopped calling the owners of the lot. I basically just did everything I could in accordance with my new reality, as if it was already happening, um, instead of living in my old reality. And it's really funny because long before the results of the spell actually came to be, I truly stopped caring about the noise as much. It was almost as if like the noise somehow got quieter. Um, I once heard a wise witch say that when you cast a spell, it first starts to work on you before it works on the things around you. And in this case, that really happened to me. Um, my energy shifted. It was like the noise was like muted in a weird way, um, almost like it was gone, even though it was definitely not gone. It was still happening. He was still out there like every day, all day. Um, but I was shifting. I just thought that was really interesting. Anyway, fast forward to the good part. Okay. Because like eight months later, um, I was just going to the grocery store one day and I walked past the parking lot for the first time in a while. It might have been the first time since I'd cast the spell. I can't remember. But lo and behold, this is what I found. And I can't believe I actually like hap that it happened and I recorded this part. Oh my God. Hold on. Okay, so check this out, guys. It is, today is what? Today is February 15th or 16th, 2023. Um, oh my God, I cannot wait to go back to my book of shadows and get the dates. I wanna say, I don't know, maybe six months since uh, we casted our hot foot powder banishing spell on the residents of this lot and I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing I have to do some research to find out for sure so I don't know but this looks closed down AF wouldn't you say this lot is usually full of cars um, from the building next door okay lady walking by okay um, and then way back there is usually like a whole setup um, with the guy who runs the lot and all of his like asshole shenanigans and his like little illegal work setup, and it's not back there. I mean, like there's trash on the table, but all of his stuff's gone. Every single vehicle is gone, and there used to be a sign over here that had the name of the lot with like a phone number you could call, and now that's gone, and it's just open, and yeah. <laughs> Okay, this might have to go into the success column. I have to do some research to find out for sure. You know, maybe they're just renovating, but um, I have a pretty good feeling about this. All right, stay tuned. So yeah, it is now officially one year later. The parking lot is still empty. 
Um, it has just been bought by someone new and remodeling or some type of renovation has started like yesterday. But this entire time, there has been no one in it. The guy left, all the cars left. There was no noise. And yeah, mission accomplished. Um, and I was just so excited because I realized after um, like the lot shut down that like, oh my gosh, I had actually recorded every part of this and was going to be able to show it to you guys. So um, for those of you watching, especially if you're new to spell work, before you try to chalk this up to like some coincidence, I just want to remind you that that parking lot has been there for, I believe, decades, at least 10 years. Um, and it was always full. So that meant no lack of business, no lack of funds, nothing like that uh, was going on. And within months of me casting the spell, the lot was completely gone. So just saying. Um, also, uh, it's not that the people of this neighborhood owe me a huge debt of gratitude or anything like that. But a thank you would be nice, I do have to say. But I guess sometimes you do a good deed and you just have to know that no one's going to know about it, but you and God, and I guess now you witches. <laughs> so I'll probably never get credit for it, but I know what happened. Um, and now you guys do too. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the story. And um, I'm so excited not only to have captured this film and uh, the evidence of everything, um, but to actually have the time and the energy and the focus to make this video. So one last shout out to Magic Mind for helping me with this. Definitely make sure to take advantage of my discount code. It's in the description, like I said. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so, so much for tuning in to this video. Let me know what you thought about it uh, down in the comments. All the usual stuff. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Bronx Switch for a whole bunch of random stuff. And if you want to work with me, learn from me, take my classes and all of that good stuff, you can go over to my website, bronxwitch.com forward slash Bronx Switch, or you can just check the description box under this video where you'll find all the links that you're going to need. They're just down below. So, all right. Yeah, that's the story. Um, from start to finish. And uh, I'm so glad that you guys tuned in. Thanks for being here. I will see you in the next one. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.